PAD affects more than 8 million people in the United States. Currently, there are no viable treatments that can repair damage to the arteries and save a patient's lower limbs from possible amputation. Sadly, many of those with PAD do get amputations or they die from complications from the disease. PAD disproportionately affects the African-American, Hispanic, and Native American communities, the very people who are least likely to know what PAD is or get the right treatment. Over 1,400 miles away in Cleveland, Dr. Kendi White Solaru and her colleague, Dr. Mehdi Shishimbor, are tackling this challenge through education and awareness. I don't think that the majority of people, um, both patients and honestly uh, providers, a lot of people are not as familiar with peripheral artery disease as with some of the other major cardiovascular conditions that we think about, like a heart attack or a stroke, for example. Only one in five Americans uh, know what peripheral artery disease is and can describe it when asked. Educating my patients about what peripheral artery disease is, especially if you have any of the risk factors, is crucial because it's most important that you get checked out early so we can prevent progression of disease. Peripheral artery disease, we now know, has one of the highest racial disparities. African Americans have the highest rates of hypertension in the world, and hypertension we know is, is closely associated with peripheral artery disease. Diabetes affects Hispanic Americans as well as African Americans uh, and Native Americans disproportionately. Having peripheral artery disease itself comes with serious consequences, the biggest of which would be amputation. And that's something that we try to avoid at all costs because it has a major impact on quality of life. This, we know that. And not just that, having an amputation um, significantly increases your risk of mortality. So we need to save limbs and save lives. Unfortunately, I think many uh, folks out there, many of the, our patients, they think amputation is in inevitable. That, you know, my grandpa had amputation, my grandma had amputation, so eventually you have diabetes and you lose your leg or you lose part of your foot. That is not the fact, that is a myth. And we need to educate our patients. I always say, please get a second, a third, and even a fourth opinion, because amputation should never be the answer until all options have been exhausted. I think we can really impact the outcome of our PAD patients by a number of uh, in initiatives. Advocacy, education, research, and innovation. As you know, there's been a significant amount of innovation and research in our field. I'm excited that we are conducting a number of trials that are gonna change the outcome of patients with PAD and CLI. And I think if we take a collective, multi-dimensional approach, we can really put a dent into the bad outcomes associated with PAD and CLI. It's great that if you have the opportunity to participate in a study that can increase our knowledge and awareness about peripheral artery disease, uh, that is what I encourage all my patients to do. There have been clinical trials in the past that have mistreated the African-American community, which could be a contributing factor to low participation rates. Medical experts are working together to rebuild trust in these communities, but it isn't that simple. There are many patients that are uh, hesitant or skeptical about enrolling into clinical trials or considering clinical trial. Obviously, I think as a field, we have not done a good job of, uh, and because of some of the past experiences, there is reservation and the folks that are hesitant to enroll into these trials are typically are from uh, those uh, uh, communities that have CLI, that have PAD. We really need to make an effort to educate. We need to build trust with our communities. And my ask would be that for patients that have PAD and CLI to please consider getting enrolled because that's the only way we can close the disparity gap. That's the only way we can change this field to be able to make an impact and save limbs. 
Antonio is going in for a checkup after having an experimental device implanted in his leg. He is participating in the LIFE BTK trial. It's a clinical trial testing out a new device designed by Abbott to treat peripheral artery disease, PAD for short, which blocks blood from flowing freely in your legs. Dr. Lisa Ochoa runs the SAVE clinic in San Antonio, Texas. She is Antonio's vascular surgeon and recommended that he participate in the clinical trial. Antonio is a perfect example of many other patients living in underserved communities. I met Antonio Acosta when he was referred to me from a local managed care group and he had had an ulcer on his great toe. He was clearly surprised to hear that he had peripheral arterial disease or bad circulation. And so when I told him about peripheral arterial disease and him having diabetes, his immediate fear was a concern for amputation. I began to realize that he would be a great candidate for this trial and the stereotypical patient that truly needs better care uh, for peripheral arterial disease. Ironically, the people at the greatest risk of amputation or death are the same people least likely to participate in clinical trials. I believe the reason some patients are excluded in clinical trials is simple access to care. Most clinical trials occur in large academic centers. They're usually in urban areas. My patients don't have access to those uh, areas of town. These underserved communities also have lack of access of transportation. Not only can they not get to the doctor that has clinical trials, like in a big medical center, but even to get to the routine care, whether it's the increased surveys that they have to go through, the pictures, the physical exams, the studies. And so that is a challenge for my patients if they don't have the transportation or the means to be able to provide the time and energy for all that it goes into a clinical uh, trial. Historically, the percentage of minorities who participate in clinical trials has been significantly lower than their respective populations. And yet, conversely, the instance of certain diseases in those same racial populations is disproportionately higher. There's many components to uh, the disparate outcomes we have in our Hispanic population who end up with diabetic amputations. And in San Antonio, north to south, our highest zip codes have three times out of the state. And it's when I began to learn about the history of San Antonio and segregation in San Antonio. And the fact that these neighborhoods, these zip codes with the highest diabetic amputation rates actually were red line neighborhoods back in the 1930s where infrastructure into those communities was, was not accessible to them. The reason I created the SAVE clinic was really to focus on decreasing diabetic amputations in the highest risk areas in San Antonio and the zip codes with the highest diabetic amputation rates. And so my main office is in the heart of South San Antonio uh, where we have some high diabetic amputation rates and my clinics are there as well. I believe that uh, practitioners like myself can increase diversity in clinical trials by taking on that challenge of opening up uh, our patient populations to these trials. When we have the support of industry and we clearly have the patient population, I think this is how we actually increase diversity in clinical trials. We have to go out and find those physicians that serve these underserved communities who really are the ones that are gonna benefit from progress in this research. Abbott is a leader in the world of clinical trials and is trying to address some of those practical barriers that prevent patients from enrolling. The company recently launched clinical research to evaluate a potential therapy for PAD. The SPRE-BTK is an investigational device that is used to reestablish the flow of blood and eventually it resorbs like a resorbable suture. One of Abbott's goals is to bring more inclusivity to racial and ethnic groups that have long been underrepresented in these critically important clinical research studies. It is important for us, and we've decided to take decisive action in this case, in this trial for PAD, which we know affects these populations substantially, to make the trial reflective of the population, to make sure that we understand how the process works how to recruit these patients, how to put them in the trial, how to make them feel comfortable belonging to a trial, and to see themselves represented in the results. We are reaching out to physicians who come from these communities, who themselves are part of the community and have the trust of their patients in that community. We are providing these centers the training, the mentoring, and the necessary resources that they need to effectively participate in the trial. 
Abbott hopes the LIFE BTK trial becomes a model for future trials. They want diversity and inclusion to be a standard component of all clinical trials. We encourage you to have an open conversation with your doctor or visit life-btk.com.